I'm 45, and my name is Bud. And how long have you been out here? Since April. Since April. So what, six, seven months, something like that? Yeah, seven months, right? I lost probably 40 pounds since I've been out here. I mean, which wasn't a bad thing anyway. I was overweight anyway, you know? But I mean, I could I could see it. I was wearing 40s, and now I'm wearing 36s, even 34s I could squeeze into. Yeah. If my wife seen me all cleaned up and everything, she'd probably be like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was hooked on heroin, right? And um, me and my wife were living with her parents. And uh, I cleaned up, and I was clean for about 12 months. And, uh, and I relapsed. And so her mom made me leave. And that's how I got out here, you know? And um, but first I, I had a car, so I was living in my car, you know? And, uh, and then um, finally I ran some red lights and didn't even know it. You know, the red light cameras got me and they suspended my license and I got pulled over and they impounded my car. And when that happened, then I had to live on the street, you know, cause I didn't have the money to get it out, you know? And then, uh, so that's how I got out here. And uh, three months ago, I got on a methadone program though. So I stopped, you know, using the heroin. But it's kind of like I'm stuck out here. So I get up about eight, and I go to Burger King, and if I got money, I eat breakfast and have coffee and wash up, brush my teeth and stuff, and then I go to the methadone program. And by the time I come back, it's usually like 10, 30, 11, and then I go to the ramp and, you know, and start panhandling. And then I do that till about, usually till about 1.30 or 2, and I'll go eat, and then I'll come back about 3 or 4 and stay there till about 5 or so because now it gets dark early. So once it gets dark, they really don't want to give you nothing. People be, you know, they're kind of scared, you know. So I usually quit by then. Anyway, now, the last few days, it's been so cold that I, I can't really stand out there for more than like two and a half, three hours until, you know, I get too cold, my feet and my fingers, you know. I mean, my toes and my fingers, you know. Everything else is pretty much warm, but they get cold. You know, Gene, I've been on the corner and sometimes it has got to me and I've actually kind of like tears came down, you know, while I was on the corner, you know, and, but I, I try not to let them see it, you know, the cars and stuff like that. But yeah, it, it, it hurts sometimes, you know, it really hurts bad. I mean, especially sometimes like uh, people just be mean, like I told you for no reason, you know, like they'll show me money or whatever and laugh at me, you know, and stuff like that, you know, and I don't ask for money. I got the sign, you know, I don't go from car to car and ask for them anything. The most I might ask for is a cigarette. If I see somebody smoking, you know, and, and then, you know, people will come by and they'll show me money and laugh at me or something like that, you know, and, and sometimes I'll respond by saying, you know, hey, it's nice to see that my situation makes you, you know, get you a, a laugh, you know, gets you happy, you know. I made somebody smile. That's how I look at it, you know. Hey, at least I made somebody smile, you know. But uh, yeah, it gets to me sometimes, but I mean, what am I gonna do? I can't curl up and die, you know? And I don't wanna turn to crime, you know? That's what I gotta do to make money. It was hard for me to pick up that sign and, and go on that corner and, and do that. It's like, all your pride is gone. It's like, I'm serious. It's like, you gotta put your pride, you just gotta just throw it away. I mean, you can't have pride out there. To tell you the truth, me and me and Jeff talk a lot, you know. And sometimes I even break down, you know, and I get I'll cry even, you know. And but he's always there for me, and I try to be there for him. We don't really have many friends. You got to be leery out here of who you trust. It's, it, it's like they'll backstab you, you know. Um, so that's about the only way I cope with it. Plus, I got my counselor. I talk to her every week over there at the methadone program, you know. And I go to a meeting over there every week and talk. You know, that's about best way to cope with it, man. I don't know what else to do, you know. Uh, I sleep right up there under the bridge. Um, yeah, I got some mats. I, I swept it all out, and I put water and swept that out. I put some mats and two blankets down, and then I got three blankets on top of me. And uh, I put plastic over the, you know, to block the wind, because that helps a lot. Uh, if I cover up my head and everything, you know, I, I start sweating even. I gotta uncover my head a little bit because I don't want to sweat too much because it's not, when I'm sleeping, I'm nice and warm, but it's when you wake up. When you wake up, it's freezing, you know? Uh, I thought it'd be worse. I didn't think I could handle it, you know? But, but uh, like I said, when I'm sleeping, it's not really a problem at all. It's when you wake up and you try to get out of the covers. Yeah, and I mean, I take no, I really keep no food up there because of the rats, you know? So I take the food and whatever food I have, I keep it, down on the on the bridge but down further not not close to me while I'm sleeping 
because there is rats up there. They ain't came by and bothered me while I was sleeping that I know of, you know. But I, I hate rats. <laughs> I can't stand them. I'm scared to death of rats. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, so that, and then I took the covers all over me, so I took them in. So, because I don't know if the rats are attracted to the heat or not. So they might try to come, you know, to get warm themselves. So I, like I said, I don't take no food. Yeah. <laughs> and, and if I hear the plastic moving, I wake up right away. Because <laughs> either somebody, I think somebody might be there or it might be a rat, you know. It's better but it's usually the wind. <laughs> difficult to get a decent amount of sleep. Yeah, yeah, that it is, that it is, yeah. Yeah, I won't deny that. I, sh I wake up all night long. Jeff told me he does too, you know, yeah. Uh, if you don't want to help somebody that's panhandling or something, you don't have to be mean, you know? And you don't have to stay back 40 feet either. Because even if you don't want to give, the guy behind you might want to give. And now you've got him 60 feet behind you, you know what I mean? So, you know, just try not to be, if you don't want to be, if you ain't got nothing nice to give to them or say to them, don't say nothing then, you know? Just leave them alone, you know? It's hard enough for us out there. It's so degrading, we're degrading ourselves, you know? That's how we feel. We feel like, you know, this is the bottom. There's nowhere else for us to go. You know, nothing left for us to, no pride or nothing left to give. So, and now when you're being mean to us, it's just like, you're just rubbing salt into the wound really bad, you know? I hope your situation no Thanks, Gene. Absolutely. Absolutely. And happy holidays to everybody. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to go on before the holidays, but <laughs> it will. Okay. Thanks.